And I want to recognize the chairman of the full committee, uh, Mr. Bishop from Utah, for five minutes. Thank you. Let me see if I can get a few of these things quickly in here and, and change the focus back to what we are talking about. Mr. Arthur, very quickly, is there a conflict between the missions of the Interior Department and Homeland Security? Uh, they can work together, but they actually have two di very different missions. And quite frankly, when they do work together, when we do enforce our uh, that works very laws, well. Work best, yes. But that requires personality, which is something we don't we legislate on worst case scenario, not on best case personality. Mr. Bell, is the violence that you're witnessing on the border increasing or decreasing? I knew the Krentz family. I feel bad about everything. Is it increasing? So where we've seen the the uh, access granted and the infrastructure come in and the road systems come in, we see less activity. There's less conflict. Uh, we don't run into folks. Um, there hasn't been uh, in our area very many violence. We do know that uh, assault on agents is up though. I belong to the Citizens Advisory Committee for our Nogales Border Patrol Station and the statistics are up on that and we get uh, briefed on that regularly. Okay, Mr. Judd, um, we are talking here not necessarily about a wall. We're talking about access. The Border Patrol needs the access that happens to be there. Have you served in other areas? You've served in Tucson, right? I have. I've also uh, served in California, in Maine, and Montana. How many, how many apprehensions did you have in Maine in a year? Uh, at my station, we had maybe two a year. A little bit fewer than in Tucson. <laughs> yes. Which means the history is somewhat cyclical. It also means that each border area is different. And having a one-size-fits-all MOU probably does not meet all the same circumstances. So, for example, historically, San Diego was the entrance point of choice until they actually waived those iconic bedrock laws and built a fence, and then it kind of shifted over to the Tucson sector. Rio Grande actually has more, but there's a different kind of personality going across. Rio Grande, a lot of those illegals that are coming across are kids, women, but in Tucson, isn't that mainly adults, males? It is, yes. So it's in each of these sectors, what we really need to have for the Border Patrol to be effective is give them flexibility to meet the differences of those situations and give them access. So this is what I really want you to talk to me about, because as we were down there, you explained why east-west access is so significant. If somebody is crossing the border illegally and you have the ability of finding that out, what is your method? What do you try and do to catch those people? Well, what you want to do is you want to box those individuals in between two agents. Uh, because if you, if you can do that, your effectiveness goes sky high. Whereas if you're chasing from behind, um, the chances of you actually catching those individuals are, are nearly none. So to do that, you need different kinds of access points. One at the border wall, one further up there, further up again. You need to be able to go behind the group as well as in front of the group. To be effective, we have to have those. And that's where the east-west access becomes critical. Absolutely. How, are, do you have a problem with maintenance of access routes that you already have? No, we don't. All right. But you do need significantly more. As, as I think we were talking, I, were we in the Coronado at the time? We were, yes. All right. Is there the ability of getting that access point right along the border so you can have somebody behind as well as somebody in front? We could absolutely build a... a, a a border uh, road that would help us be effective. Is it there now? It is not. Why not? The environmental laws, frankly. Are you going to tell me that sometimes it takes so long to get approval from the land managers, you don't even have time, you don't even ask the question? Oftentimes we just don't even want to go through the process because we know what the outcome is going to be. It does, borderland has a specific meaning, correct? It does, yes. It's 100 miles. Yes. It is different. It is. is and, and some of the frustrations I have are obviously people who simply, I think, try and put their head in the sand and ignore that there is an opinion. And, um, and, and sometimes we make a decision that if we're giving Homeland Security the ability of making these kinds of decisions on local, local communities, aren't we already doing that with the Department of Interior and Department of Agriculture? Aren't they already making these arbitrary decisions on these local communities? They have, yes. The difference is not, is not significant except that the difference is National security has an interest in those areas. The difference is the topography. So that Tucson sector is 80% controlled by the federal government. Almost half of that is in wilderness area. You don't find that along the Texas border. You don't find that in Maine or, or Montana. No, you right don't. Now. What we need to do is make sure that we give flexibility for access. Access has to be critical. If the Border Patrol does not have access, we cannot do our job with security. It's not the same thing as a wall. 
but that access becomes significant and our, our environmental laws inhibit that access from taking place. I yield back in one second.